Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I hopefully am able to show you what the difference is between properly wiring up your battery to your inverter and then uh, just using like a quick fix uh, like battery clamps to do it. Uh, and I want to hopefully be able to show you the difference of a proper wiring opposed to an improper wiring or just like a quick wiring. When you're talking about large loads, I'm talking about, uh, well, I'm going to be doing it with a, uh, a 1500 watt heater. And I want to show you uh, the difference in those connections when we're running that heater at full blast, which will be right around 130 amps. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here's what we're working with. We're working with a uh, 100 amp hour, 12 volt red ODO battery, uh, lithium iron phosphate. Uh, it is rated for a 100 amp uh, discharge. And we are actually probably gonna be pulling around 150. So hopefully this thing powers it for three minutes. Uh, we have our timer set right here. So that will be our timer, our three minute timer. In the back, we have our Lee Sky 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter, which will be able to power that 1500 watt heater uh, with no problem. Uh, and so we're gonna be monitoring it with this amp meter and we will be watching the voltage on the Lee Sky to make sure it doesn't go too low. And then we will also be using a thermal camera to, uh, to check the, uh, the, the temperature of the, of the terminal connections. So um, let me show you what it looks like before we turn everything on. Okay, this is just a quick view of, of the whole setup. Um, you can see that everything is nice and cool. There's nothing uh, that's uh, out of the ordinary. Everything is right around room temperature. So let's go ahead and start this test. And I will show you again what everything looks like after three minutes. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, turn on the inverter. And you'll see the amperage of the inverter jump up a little bit. Let's start our timer and start our heater. All right. And you can see the amperage is jumping up to, it jumped up to 190 amps. And now it's settling back down to right around 148, 147 amps. So we're gonna let this run and then we're gonna look at the temperatures of these terminals at around three minutes. Okay, well, we are just getting on three minutes right now. So let's go ahead and pull up the thermal camera again and see what it looks like. All right, there is our battery right there. And look at that. You can actually see the heat inside the battery right there. But look at these, look at these terminal connections. Let me go ahead and square onto these terminal connections. And we are looking at 107, 108 degrees Fahrenheit for this terminal connection. Look at that. See, I can touch it with no problem. It's fairly warm. The terminal connections down there are a little warmer. They're 125 degrees. And then the battery, the battery is getting pretty warm on the inside. So I might have to use, uh, I'll, I'll probably use the other red ODO battery for the second test. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this off and I'm gonna wire it back up with, uh, actually, I'm gonna use the same battery. I wanna make sure it's all the same. So let's go ahead and turn this off. And uh, I'm going to wire this up with uh, just battery clamps. And it's still, this is two gauge wire. It's going to be the same gauge wire. The difference is going to be, it's not gonna be proper connections to the battery. It's going to be battery clamps. So let's go ahead and get that wired up. Okay, now we have our second setup, which is uh, the same red audio battery, the same inverter, uh, but this time we have battery clamps just attached to it. They're not, it's not bolted down with, with ring terminals uh, in a proper connection. It's just a quick battery clamp setup. It still uses two gauge wire, so the wiring is the same gauge. The only difference is uh, the clamps on top of the battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you an image of the temperatures uh, before the test and then three minutes in. And as you can see, I mean, it, everything does look hot, but 
inside the square is where I care about. And I mean, the inverter is only 85, 90 degrees. You know, if we look at the actual terminal, the terminal is, the terminal is 93 degrees. So that's not warm at all. Even though, even though the colors show it, you can see on the right hand side, the scale of temperatures. And the hottest thing there is, you know, it's showing, it's showing 90 degrees. So uh, we are well in the safe range for, for our, 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 our initial setup. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and run it for three minutes. Let's go ahead and set our timer. Oh, we need to turn on our inverter. Let's go ahead and put our, our amp, amp clamp back on. Okay, so it's showing uh, 0.4 amps. Our voltage of our battery is still at 13 volts, so it's, it's safe. Let's go ahead and get this party started. You can see the amperage is again jumping up. And now it's dropping back down. And it's setting at, uh, what is it, 156 amps? And I noticed that our inverter is actually showing 10.3 volts. So uh, we might need to switch out the battery. I'm not sure, but we'll see. But yeah, it's pulling 158 amps. It's been one minute so far. Okay, it's been a minute and 50 seconds, and I'm actually starting to see uh, smoke rising from this negative terminal. So let's pull up the thermal camera. Okay, and let's see what our temperature is. And the temperature, oh my God. Uh, okay, the temperature is 200, the high point is 289 degrees. 200, okay, now it's, see it's, oh, I can, I'm getting, oh, can I get 300 degrees? 301 degrees Fahrenheit. And over here, you know, we're, we're looking at something a little bit lower, but that one, that one's super hot. Uh, and it's probably because the connection is a little, a little, it's probably not as good as this one. But still, even with this one, it's 178 degrees. And with the rest of the bat, with the rest of the battery, I mean, these terminals down here, uh, they again are like a 120, 125, something like that. And the cabling itself is not warm. I mean, the, the cabling is fine, but these connections, look at that. We're looking at 370 degrees now. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this test. It's been three minutes and 15 seconds now, so let's stop it. Okay, so now that that's all done, I really did wanna show you that it is very important to have the proper connections to your off-grid system. It's, it's the same gauge wire. It's a, you know, this is a two gauge cable. This is a two gauge cable. The only difference was that we have a ring terminal, a proper ring terminal on here, and for this one, we were using a battery clamp. Now, it was amazing to me how hot these battery clamps got. I mean, the amount, the, the surface, the surface area that you're getting with these clamps is very small compared to uh, what you'd get from a proper connected uh, ring terminal. And I know that this was a very extreme example but i really wanted to prove the point that make sure your connections are what they should be for the battery size and and the inverter size that you have if you have something that is incorrect or if you're like you know what i could just fly with having you know having a a, a battery clamp instead of instead of proper connections don't do it it's so worth it to get all the proper stuff at the beginning. I know it's a little bit more money and you might have to go out and actually get stuff rather than you know going to a auto parts store and just picking up some battery clamps because it works. But if you're willing to power up some big loads and you're using the proper sized cable but your connection is garbage, don't do it because the heat factor can be triple or almost quadruple what it would be uh, if you had if you had proper proper cabling and proper connections. So I just wanted to show you that it, it really does matter uh, what kind of what kind of connection you have to your battery system or to your inverter when it comes to 
very large loads. Small loads, you could probably get away with. But there's always gonna be that instance where the power goes out and it's freezing outside and you're like, oh my God, I need to turn on my heater. Not thinking that, oh, you just have cheap connections or cheap battery clamps uh, you know, connecting your system. And all of a sudden you've got a fire. So with all that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something. Have a great day. Bye-bye.